Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, stick around, subscribe, like, do all that good stuff. Um, today we're going to be going uh, elk and mule deer shed hunting. Uh, in my last shed hunting video, I talked about uh, just like two sheds that I found, so I figured I'd show them to you. The first one, I had to like hike to the moon basically to find, and it's a beast. <laughs> just like a little dink. Uh, but still cool to find something. And then this was the first shed I found the other day, which that to me, that's the biggest shed I've ever found. That That is a beast to me. So that's, to me, that's freaking awesome. But hopefully today, maybe we'll go find some more, maybe find one bigger than this guy. That'd be sick. Find my first elk shed, that'd be huge. So jump in the car we got like about an hour drive and see you in a minute well that's no good so i guess before we go shed hunting i got to take care of that so that's great so we'll go get an obd scanner from AutoZone or something check it out see if we can get it fixed up real quick all right so basically whole hour and change later went to AutoZone, used their obd scanner they got me the code p0420 <laughs> literally um Basically, what it says, cat system efficiency in the sea below threshold bank one. So that bank one, I'm, what I assume refers to the O2 sensor that's in front of the cat. So basically, um, what I was thinking and what the guy was saying was that the cat's not flowing good. And he's saying that I need to drive the car further, longer, harder to clean out the cat. The only issue is, is that I usually only drive at like a minimum an hour at a go besides like unless I run to Walmart like during the week. So what I did was I grabbed my car was basically uh, had a low tank gas anyway. So what I did, grabbed the can of sea foam, threw it in, and then I just put a t uh, tank of 91 in instead of 87, hoping that maybe the higher octane fuel and the sea foam do a better job of clearing it out or something and the code goes away. I also unplug the negative terminal on the battery to get the code away anyway so hopefully it just doesn't come back on so see how it goes we got like a hour and change drive from here to actually go and get some sheds so here we go best part of unplugging the negative terminal on the battery is basically now i have no check engine light so now i don't have to stare at that for the whole drive so woo! that live in Utah leave a comment down below how is Utah's fly fishing scene like I've never I haven't seen a single fly fisherman and I just drove past this one river and now I just saw a million of them so I do a ton of fly fishing back in New York so let me know how it is we're getting there we're pretty close I just wanted to say uh, I just can't believe it just thank you to the viewers I I posted kind of like my first real video yesterday and it already got like 60 views which i know is not that much at all but to me that's the most views i've ever had on a video so thank you so if you like this one please smash the like button i'd really appreciate it and let me know at least that you like these videos and if you can't like the video for me at least like the video for my freaking check engine light to stay off and if you can't like it for that like it to at least give me some good luck so I could find an elk shed today. That is the dream. If I've never found an elk shed before, I'd love to find one. So smash that like button, all right? And I'll talk to you when we get there. Alright, 
so we made it check engine light didn't come back on which is huge but just i just pulled in and i'm glassing up these sides and i don't know if i'm gonna go here i'm just up so high and like the elevation gain between here and the top of the mountain doesn't seem like that much it seems like there's also a lot of aspens but it doesn't seem like that much cover and I just spent like a good chunk of time like actually glassing up the side to like at least see if I could see a deer first or an elk first and then also there's three trailers of people here with snowmobiles so I feel like if I was an elk or a mule deer I wouldn't be coming to a place where people would probably be snowmobiling by me especially if I had nowhere to hide so I'm gonna keep going see what I see also, one quick thing to add in. I know it's a good sign when I see elk crossing signs on the side of the road. I usually only see mule deer crossing signs, but I saw my first elk crossing sign. So that better be like a good omen or something. droppings they're way bigger than any mule deer droppings i've seen so fingers crossed that that's an elk so i'm gonna work my way up into this maybe over there we'll see i'm gonna get up a little higher in glass but Quick pro tip, don't do what I did. If you watch the video up to this point, you'll see I put on ankle high hiking boots and that's because those are the only boots I brought with me. So just soaking wet. Good footwear is probably the most important thing. That's definitely elk poop, has a lot fresher than the other stuff so things are looking up things are looking up holy crap i don't know if you guys saw that or could see it that is a freaking porcupine oh my god i almost just stepped on the thing holy crap look at that oh my god that's nuts i've never seen a porcupine this close it looks like something might have gotten his back. Oh my god. Oh no, he's just got him puffed up. Look at him. Alright, yeah, let's not mess with this guy. Kind of hard to make out, but I think I think these are my first elk traps right here. I mean, there's a bunch there, a couple here. I mean, there's elk poop everywhere, so hopefully we're headed in the right direction. I mean... Seen a lot of signs. You can see where an elk's been rubbing or mule deer. That's pretty damn high. But I may have oh yeah. There's more there's some more rubs over there. But I may have just heard an elk or a mule deer. I'm not sure. It almost sounded like a wheeze of a white tail. And I've, every time I've spooked mule deer, I've never heard them make a noise. Which is kind of making me thinking like it might be an elk. So, fingers crossed, but something. I mean, that's at my hip. So, something's rubbing real high. But, let's do this. I 
new, uh, I guess you could say, what is it called? I don't know, adapter for my binos for the tripod. And I was able to get them attached. However, there's a piece right there that I dropped in the car and put left in the car. So that's great. But I mean, I'm still gonna use it. Give it a try. I'm gonna try and glass. I'm gonna try and figure out where I'm gonna go because that I'm thinking is gonna be the best bet up in there. Over there, second, and here, last. The only thing is that's the furthest, this is the closest. That's the closest and that's eh. So we'll see. All right, little update. Just finished glassing and I don't know, feeling a little nervous. Haven't seen, I mean like I've seen poop and tracks, but that was all where there was no snow. So like it could have been there from a while ago and the sun melted it off. I haven't seen any tracks on snow. I haven't seen any poop on snow. I mean, I just glassed a lot and I didn't see anything. So I don't know if they're like this way to hang out when it's warmer out or what, but I think I'm gonna run back to the car before I get too far into this and I'm gonna try and maybe drive down the canyon a little bit and then jump out and hop back in. So I'll get back to you, all right? I picked a wonderful day to decide to go up high and go shed hunting. It's, I was kind of worried about this because like, at least by me, like the mountains right where I usually go shed hunting, that only have mule deer in them. Like, at least there, like not a lot of snow until you get to like 7,000 feet. And then like, still then like, there's plenty of, uh, plenty of, uh, you know, ground to solidly walk on now here i'm not sure i gotta be at least past six thousand feet but i mean like i'm just like walking through a foot of snow and i just haven't seen any elk sign and i just think my best bet is going to be to go somewhere that's lower in elevation just oh see oh oh see here we go oh no see breaking three no aha steady that is we go. Don't fall through. Fall through. So heading out. Go to some place a little lower. Hopefully. Maybe spot something from the road. I was just walking. And here's a foot of some bird. And there's another foot of the same bird. So someone must have had an unlucky day. I've never seen just like two random feet just like hanging out. <laughs> All right, just got back to the car. Super, super, super freaking windy now and super, super snowy, so. I probably should have checked the weather before I came and did this, but I mean, I kind of, I kind of was thinking when I left, I was like, oh, I can either stay at like low elevation and know I'm not going to deal with snow or come up here and figured I deal with snow, maybe just on like the north facing slopes and not so much the south facing slopes. And I mean, unless it was like a really high south facing slope and even once it, but then it got to the issue where once you get too high, then there's just snow everywhere. So I kind of got snowed out. So now I'm going to try and either drop down and hope that the wind and snow stop once I get a little lower or I'm just gonna have to pack it in so we'll see hey I hope you enjoyed most of that video all right so I got one other thing to show you all right and it's gonna be that huge shed I found the other day uh just like my reaction like how I found it all right so I hope you enjoy this little clip and thanks for watching this video all right so please if you liked it leave a thumbs up subscribe for more good stuff all right 
hopefully be uploading like three times a week. So have a good one and enjoy. Thank you.